I also want to thank the organizers for inviting me here this evening to speak about accessing prescriptions in Ontario. And um, I have been here for 10 years now, and there are two drug reimbursement specialists here at the Odette Cancer Centre, and I'll talk more about that during the presentation. So I want to introduce the drug reimbursement service to you, uh, give an overview of drug coverage in Ontario, and discuss how the drug reimbursement team can help patients. And finally, the mo probably one of the more important things is where to find us if, if you have a question. So we, the drug reimbursement service here at the Odette Cancer Center, we are part of the patient and family support department. So we have two locations. One is T-Wing, which is the Odette building, right the closest building to Blythewood and Bayview. And we also are available on M6, which is in the breast center on the sixth floor, M-Wing. Uh, main thing is we are available to all Odette patients. Really important because we don't want people to have to buy things out of pocket if they didn't have to, that kind of thing. And it's important that, um, you know, if you are spending money on prescriptions and you have a question about it, that you mention it to somebody who could direct you to us. The other thing about being available to all Odette Cancer Center patients, for people who are not coming to our hospital, there are drug reimbursement specialists across the province, so most hospitals do have somebody in this role. And our goal, obviously, is to assist patients with access to prescription medications. And we're looking, really, to reduce people's out-of-pocket drug costs. So Ontario, uh, drug coverage is provincial. And um, really, there are four ways that drugs are covered. And one is private insurance. The other would be public insurance. Now, that would mean government drug coverage. Uh, some people do pay out-of-pocket for prescriptions. And I'm going to speak about other programs. Those are usually programs of the drug companies. The main question from a new patient would be, how do I pay for prescriptions? So that's something that we help to investigate with patients. I'm going to start by talking about private insurance in Ontario. We don't know the exact percentage, but approximately 50% of Ontarians have some kind of private insurance, usually an employee benefit through work, mm -hmm. and it does include prescription drug coverage. The, the thing about pres uh, private insurance is it's, it varies, it really varies. So the, the next thing we have to look into is, is the medication prescribed covered by that private insurance. The main thing to know about private insurance is so, when I say that plans vary, some plans would have a maximum on them, and we have to know about that maximum before we can say whether a drug would be covered or not. And that could be an annual maximum, it can be a lifetime maximum. So we have to explore that. Some plans don't have maximum, so they're unlimited. Again, some pl many plans are partially covering drugs. Most common, 80 or 90% is what we most commonly see in Ontario. And then sometimes the, when we're investigating if a drug can be covered by the plan, we have to fill out a prior authorization form and that form gets sent in to the insurance company where they make a decision on approval of the drug. Another thing to note, we still see pay and submit plans so that instead of you getting to be uh, reimbursed directly by the pharmacy, you have to mail in a receipt. Now that can be a real problem when you get to some of the medications you know the prices, they can be in the thousands. So pay and submit plans, believe it or not, they still do exist and they can sometimes be a problem, but we would help to investigate whether there's a way around that. Now I'll move to public insurance. So that's through the Government of Ontario, the Ministry of Health. It's called Ontario Drug Benefit and uh, many Ontarians have access to public insurance. Okay, if you're over 65 in the province, you would have access to it through your health card. If you're on Ontario Works or Ontario Disability Support Program, if you have CCAC services, so that's a visiting nurse, in some cases they would allow for drug coverage. It's kind of a smaller um, access point, really. 
if you live in a long-term care facility. And the final one is the Trillium Drug Program. And that's a, actually quite a large program. Anybody under 65 can enroll in that program. And one of my roles is to help patients with that. Um, there's a few things about Trillium that I'll talk about on the next slide. Uh, that's just the website. So lots of patients do look on the website, which is the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care. And at the search, even if you went to Trillium Drug Program or Ontario Drug Benefit, you could find lots of information. The, the, pro the, pro the province has actually a large website. Um, so for the Trillium Drug Program, lots of patients phone me asking about it. Uh, you don't need it if you're if you're if you've turned 65, and you to in in order to enroll, you do need an Ontario health card. You do um, also need to have a proof of income document, and I would say it's really for people with either no drug coverage or partial drug coverage. So sometimes we would use Trillium for people with 80 or 70 percent drug coverage in order to pay the remainder. Um, but the problem with Trillium is, again, it's not 100% drug coverage, it's income-based. So it's sometimes hard to have 100% drug coverage, even putting all the programs together. So the other uh, way that sometimes we access co-pays, deductibles, or drug coverage would be through what we call patient assistance programs. They're through the drug companies. So uh, even if you had 80% coverage, for example, you're still out of pocket 20%. And that's where we look to the uh, patient assistance programs to see, does this medication have a patient assistance program? And this is really important in oncology. So just to note, these are programs of the drug company, but the drug company ha uh, contracts out the work to a third party, and they do help to look at what you'd be financially eligible for. It's usually done over the phone. Enrollment is, is usually a, an enrollment form and then a phone call. And just to note, not all drugs have a program, but we often are asked even to look into one-off medications to see if they have any support. And um, they're really, they are an important payer, uh, often in Ontario for co-pays, deductibles, 20% and occasionally for compassionate medication if there's a program. So our main role is to assist patients and caregivers to look at funding options for prescriptions. We help in, with the insurance investigation. Usually I would do a call with the patient to the insurance company to ask at the customer service level. Uh, we help with all the enrollments into any programs and of course with any forms or letters that are needed. Uh, the, the other thing is we do work with the team, so that is the physician, the nurse, the pharmacist, the social worker, whoever's part of your healthcare team. Sometimes we, that's mainly who would call on us. The patients can also come and find us in our offices. Um, and there are two of us, as I mentioned, Dina Slater, who's not here this evening, and myself, Allison Chambers. Those are our office room numbers, and we do, we do, we do occasionally have patients who come in and, and ask us for assistance without having any type of referral, so they're self-referring, and that's fine, because we want to make sure that people know that we're here. And that's really the presentation. Thank you. Okay, so we can take questions now, if there are any from the audience. Uh, Shannon or I will run the microphone over. Does anyone have a question for Allison? <laughs> One of the questions we get often is, if you have private insurance and there's only partial coverage or you're turned down with private insurance, is it possible if, if the, the drug is listed on the provincial formulary that they will, the government would cover it then? That's a great question. Um, so the question is, if you have private insurance but your plan doesn't cover it, can you enroll in Trillium or use your, yes you can. So that's a great question. So if you're under 65 and your private insurance doesn't cover a medication, Trillium will need it in writing from the insurer. We can help with that. They'll need it in writing that it's not covered. And if it's listed for the province of Ontario an eligible medication. I think there's 4,000 meds or something on the Ontario drug benefit formulary. You could enroll in stating that your insurance doesn't cover it. Then you could 
access that medication through Trillium. If you're over 65, it wouldn't apply because you're, you're, the province is the first payer. The provincial coverage through your health card is the first payer. So mostly that would be a question for people under 65. Um, so you had said the Trillium uh, is also income-based, so is there a cap at what, like at some point where they wouldn't consider you for it? Yeah, that's a really great question. So some people do come, come into my office saying they're not eligible for Trillium. So what, what you're looking at is, is, is maybe somebody who's high, whose income shows high on their income tax. But there is no upper limit, so anybody can enroll in Trillium. I know in the Trillium guide they show income to 100,000, but there's also a way to calculate what your deductible would be, because we're looking at meds that are so expensive that even with a high income, Trillium could benefit definitely Ontarians to access meds, especially in all of, in all of oncology, the price of the meds. So there's no upper limit, though there is a deductible with Trillium, which means um, you'd be buying drugs up to a certain amount, and then Trillium would would kick in once you've met your deductible. We had a situation where my husband was started on, an, I guess you'd call it an immunotherapy cream, the DPCP, and that was really the second choice because IL-2 wasn't covered at the time by OHIP. And a few months in, we got the word that, gee, OHIP has started to cover it. So switched over to that, and it, it was so much better. The treatment went so much smoother. Do you find that there are situations where when a patient first starts on their therapy, the ideal therapy isn't covered, and then all of a sudden, whoops, turn around and you are able to offer it. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a different question. Yeah, that's a good question because I think the thing is, I imagine the province is reviewing meds all the time and it's, it's really beyond my role about sort of the timelines that meds would get approved within. Um, but I could see, I know like people have referred to it tonight, so many new meds have come to market um, in the last, probably four years within this, within melanoma and in oncology. So the province is always reviewing meds is, is how I would answer that. So I guess one of the comments to make about that is often when a drug, the drug approval process in Canada and in Ontario is a long process. So and even with the IL-2 injections, you know, we had to go through a whole application process and the whole process took a long time. Often what happens in those situations when the drugs are going through the approval process, often there's a program that's provided by the drug companies where we can still access the drugs. Unfortunately for IL-2, that wasn't the option. It, the, the company wasn't, uh, wasn't able to provide the drug for us. But prior to that, they had provided the drug for free for, for many, many years, um, up until we, we had to submit. But usually, there's some kind of program that will give us access to the drugs while we're waiting for approval from the Ministry of Health for, for funding for the drugs. Any other questions from the audience? Thank you.